And here we go. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Uh, oh, damn, I fucked that up. <coughs> I'm at a few. I'm, I'm at a few. <laughs> yeah! video guys today we're gonna be talking about the Pan America and a few other things about Harley Davidson I know I made the video yesterday but I had a few guys in the comments asking about old school Jerry right here and I you know I had to bring him on man I wanted Jerry's input in this and um I feel like there's still a lot more to talk about um, there's a big craze right now everyone's talking about this topic um, obviously because it's a big thing um, but yeah let's uh let's get into it let's have a well let's get a cheers you got your beer, but um, and you got your energy shake. Gotta, I got a protein shake, cause yeah, back in the gym. Cause yeah, back in the gym again. Um, all right, so you saw my video, right? I hope yeah. you saw my video. Yeah, I saw your video. <laughs> okay, so I watched a little bit. No, I know what you. Fuck off. Thing. <laughs> What'd you think about the uh, presentation first before we dive into everything? Cinematically, yeah, it was like watching like a mini movie and shit, like a history movie, and, and it, the scenery was fantastic. I mean, I would love to ride the, the shit they were riding in that video. Yeah, they were like in a desert. Yeah, they were like hills. desert mounds. It was it was really cool. Yeah. It made me want to do ADV stuff, and I never want to do ADV stuff. Yeah. I mean, I used to ride dirt bikes back in my teens and early twenties, but you know, we used to ride in the Meadowlands or down the Pine Barrens or in the woods, like crazy stuff, but not, you know, not nothing like out in the middle of nowhere riding up mountains and shit. They had a lot of different locations, so I, yeah. I know, like, they ended they the ended the video, them. like, in, in the Midwest, which is awesome. Yeah. But then they are also out in Africa, mm -hmm. they were out in the desert, it was, it was awesome, man. It was very, it was very cool, and, and you know, they said Jason Momoa directed it and everything, he did a good job. I liked it, I, it, it built excitement. For something I normally wouldn't be excited in. I thought he did a great job. Um, okay, so presentation was good. Um, let's get into the bike. What you thought about the bike? I really liked the bike a lot. I liked it beforehand, but I really like it now. And I mean, I know you're a fan of that white orange color. I'm, I'm more of the a fair one. the gray. The special. The gray I like. The special I like the gray. I'm not the base bikes didn't. I was like, eh. You know, for the couple grand difference, I definitely get a special. Yeah, because with the special, you're gonna get the heated grips, yeah. skid plate. Yeah. Um, you're gonna have the options for the spoke wheels. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing that pissed me off, though. They're kind of like a little sneaky with the. Okay, it's seventeen thousand three hundred for this bike and nineteen nine for this bike, and they show you the fully loaded bike, but it's an extra three fifty for the paint job. It's an extra five hundred for the wheels. Well, well hold on, all right, all right, the three fifty for a paint job, but I went up to BMW and. If, when you go to the BMW website, uh, like a nice paint job is like a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, uh, their paint job is only the tank and the little front fairing thing. The rest of it's all the same. Yeah. So the fenders, the, you know, it's all the same on all the bikes. Yeah. It's just the two pieces. So it's kind of like the FTR. I'm wondering if down the road you can just like buy covers and swap them off. Like maybe those are covers. Um, but I think the gas tank is all aluminum. Yeah. So that I, would be a hard thing to do. But as far as that, like I said, and then $1,000 for the uh, the adjustable riding, they don't tell you that. Like you have to go on the website and see in that. In the video, they made it seem like, oh, like it comes yeah, with, it comes with all this great adjustable height. And, and, then you and you're ride, like, that like, shit is cool. It's worth the money. Yes, and then you like, go on the website and you're like, it's an extra 1500 then plus the thing. Then the prep, then, then, then the freight, not even counting the prep. You're over $22,000. Well, you, you know what it is? At any time, Hardy, if you notice, in the past, anytime Harley Davidson introduces new technology, you always got to pay for it separately. Yeah. And then later on, like, like, well, like example, the, RD, well, the at least, RDRS is standard. At least the RDRS is standard. I was going to say, so, thank you for that, because on the, on the dressers, you got to pay an extra thousand bucks. Exactly. So the thing is that they, they usually roll things out like that little by little, and then it's like, all right, well, you got to pay for this. But then, like, two years later on the line, yeah, it's like, like, we're right, going to pay we'll for LEDs it. this year, but maybe two years later, the fucking <laughs> LEDs on the bike finally. <laughs> finally. <laughs> finally. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I was impressed with it. The price point, like I said, you're 22,000, then you get the bags. Now you're up like 25,000. And that's if any of these dealers don't do that scumbag bullshit and jack the yeah, prices hold on, hold on. up. Yeah, that's true. Okay. If they start marking the prices up, they're going to kill any chance of Harley selling to new people because yeah. they're going to be like, these dealers are ripoffs. That's true. So hopefully all the dealers out there are listening and they, they, they just sell the bike for what it is and don't try to make an extra grand or two because it's the hot new thing if it's the hot new thing, but we don't even know because 
a lot of people are excited. I'm excited to ride it. You're excited to ride it. But are we going to lay down money and buy it? That's the thing. Well, that that's going to also play a big part in the demographic area that you live in. Yes. But right before we get into that, just going back to what we said about the bags, the competition also makes you pay for the bags separately. See, I thought the BMW, like certain models, came with them, but I yeah. guess it's an extra. It's like an extra two grand for the two, three, the three boxes. Yeah, it's like should aluminum be boxes and like yeah. different materials. Um, mm. I, I mean, it's it's like I don't know if I get the top, but especially when I showed it to my wife, she's like with the top box. She's like that thing is ugly. She's I'm like yeah, but it's ADV. She's like, where are you ADVing around here? <laughs> but that's like all right. You have the your your street light. I spent an extra like seventeen hundred dollars for my tour bag. For your yeah. tour bag, so that's like someone saying, oh, "Well, the tour bag is ugly." Yeah, but I mean, if you're going on, on trips, tour bags, yeah, if you're going on a trip, cross country, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So for me and my wife, the awesome. tour pack works or whatever. I'm not a big fan of tour packs either, but they work. Same thing with saddlebags. I, I I love saddlebags more so now than ever, ever before, but they look they don't look good. So like like you don't like running saddlebags, but then. Who's the guy holding your drink or holding your extra sweatshirt or holding Dude. something? <laughs> hey, I, I, I have, I have yeah, my tour bag. Now you have little bags. bags. Now, man. now you do. I got my tour bag. Last now, summer so. you didn't have anything. Can you hold this? Can you hold this? <laughs> and then you got the front bag and you're like, okay, put my phone so at least I'm not having them hold everything. Or your cigarettes are flying out in the highway out of your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I quit smoking, so no cigarettes. Oh, did you? Congratulations. Six months free good. now, baby. Wow. What's that? That's good. We'll drink um, to that, right? We'll drink to that, man. Get help. I'm over here working out and everything, you know? I mentioned something about um, the buyer, and, and it's going to be very important on the type of demographics. Mm -hmm. Location is going to, I think, is going to play a big part. And I know we were talking before we started the video, but I was letting you know that in the summertime, I've seen. I'm not gonna say a lot, but I've seen a handful of people on ADV oh, bikes yeah. who ride around here and there. But it's like a handful. Like, all right, well, there goes one, and all right, that's it. You know, but and about 30 or 40 Harleys go by, and you're like, <clears> okay, <throat> and there goes something, a sport bike. Exactly. And so, bikes. for example, us, like we we live in North Jersey. It's right very York city, yeah. Suburban area, city areas. We're like 15 minutes in from the city, so it's like the. There's no off-roading around here anywhere, and if you want to go off-roading, you go. Well, if you go to New York City or Philadelphia, or you can do some off-roading on the street. <laughs> well, she's so bad. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Um, yeah. No, nah, but I, if, you, if you want to do off-roading, I guess you got to go upstate. Yeah. You well, know? New York, we're right here. We're upstate. Upstate, yeah. we go to PA. PA is right there yeah. as well. But it's it's uh, it's not the same as like for example like let's say someone who lives in Australia. Yeah, or you even know, Arizona. Arizona, it's in the Midwest. Yeah, or even in, like in Tennessee, like go down to the, the mountains or like the Taylor Dragon or something. I mean, the thing's gonna handle really well on the road too because of lean angles. Like you could, that's the first Harley you're gonna be able to lean. Yeah. Like it's even so my V Rod, you handles okay, but you can't really lean like yeah. these thing. You can lean, and it's light. It's yeah. It's very I mean, light. That's my whole thing. Like it's 550 pounds. We said it 560 pounds, whatever it is. How's that? And he goes 135 miles an hour. How's that going to be going over 100 miles an hour? Is that thing going to be getting blown all over the place like a piece of paper, or is it going to be pretty solid? I don't know. I, I, they, I, I feel like they kind of took their time because it's been like two years of yeah. them just, you know, crafting every little line on the bike and doing things. I'm pretty sure that it's just designed for for every little aspect. When they said 135 miles an hour top speed, see, that's what I really like. Like, you know, they kind they kind of came out and said it, but they didn't say it. Like 135 mile an hour top speed, 150 horsepower. Like Harley never quotes 150 any of that horsepower. stuff. Any of that stuff. 150 horsepower on a 500 pound bike. Think about what that's gonna be on the 1200, 1250 custom if it's mm. got the same horsepower. Mm. That'd be a bike I'd buy. I cannot wait to see that bike. Yeah, that'd be a bike I'd buy. That bike is, I'm gonna post it right here for you guys to see as well right now, the little clip, but wow, what a beautiful, Prior to that, we've only seen the pictures of the white one online. This one's and, so much nicer. Oh my god, that black and, and bronze. Yeah. Woo! Woo! $13,000, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I would assuming. Hope. I'm thinking more 15, 14, 16, 14, 599. 15, 16. I mean, Harley messed it up with the live wire with the price. We could all attest to that $30,000 is way too much. I don't care what kind of technology. Beautiful bike, and I'm a big fan. Yeah. Right? If it was 20, probably would have bought one. Now they came out with this bike, it's in the right price range. They're trying to compete. So hopefully the 1250, they don't get the Harley syndrome and go, oh my God, it's our newest bike and we should charge 15, 16, $17,000 for the bike. No, it should be down 
below the standard. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think so. You know why? Because at that price point, they're just gonna look at the low rider S. It's like, all right, well, you're, you're gonna charge. It's a six. different bike because it's liquid cold, 150 horsepower. Yeah, but it's like, all right, for two thousand dollars more, I probably get that bike. That's what I would say too. This bike on the soft shell platform. Like I said, hopefully they price it right. I'm thinking, like I said, thirteen five nine nine or fourteen five nine nine. Nine. I would say it should be below the standard, which is thirteen nine 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 or something like that. I think. But if it's got ABS and everything, it should be in the low teens, because that's what you want to attract. That you're going to attract a lot of riders that way. And that's your that's what that bike is. Is literally going to attract a young flat top. Yeah. All the, the guys riders. that were on Sportsters and that wanted something a little better, or the guys that are on Indian Scouts and stuff, they're going to all buy that bike. That bike is primarily going to be like a secondary bike, I think, because it's like, all right, well, it's like, for example, myself. It's kind of solo seat or bike. you. It looks like exactly. a solo seat. So it's like, for right. me, I'm not, I'm not even fit on it. I mean, you're, you're, you're a big guy. You know? But like for, for the average rider who already who already owns a Harley or two, who, who might be looking for a secondary to third option bike, yeah. that, that's going to be a pretty cool well, bike. Well, that's getting back to second, third option. Pan America is maybe not a lot of people's first option. It's probably their second or third option. Very true. I mean, that's that would be my second and third option. Actually, it'd be my fifth option. But yeah, I mean, you got four bikes. <laughs> but it would it would be an option, you know. But I would use that more as a commuter bike than I would my regular Harleys because it's liquid cold, because it's higher up, it's got more travel. I mean, I work in Newark, and it's kind of like driving through the the freaking yeah. So for you, roads for you, you'll, you'll be off roading in Newark. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> where I work, it is like off roading. Exactly. The potholes are like exactly. You know, um, but, it's a, it's, a, it's a cool bike. I mean, I, I really hope um, it's, it's going to help the company out. So we'll get into the discussion now. Do you think this bike is going to help Harley keep it where they're at or people are just going to overlook it? I think right now the excitement, there's a lot of excitement on it. I think they messed up majorly by not having it ready. Yeah. Like you announced it today, it should be coming in the dealers next week, yeah. not May. Yeah. And they didn't even say May first; it could be like the end of May, yeah. or they could push it back more because of COVID or whatever. You might not see that bike till the summertime. And they then they said, well, you know, they, the dealers might sell a lot of them, but then they said, oh, dealers only might be getting one or two. So that's going to hurt them right there. You only get one standard, one regular. You're going to give it to your top customer, or somebody might pay more because they have fu money and they say, oh, well, I don't care. So then you're going to really piss people off by not having availability. Well, I mean, it, it's going to be like supply and demand type of thing, I think, yeah. for this bike. So I think this year for the introduction, they're, they're going to keep it to a limit. Um, and if they have that demand for the following year, then I'm pretty sure they'll make more of it. But, you know, coming out with a brand new model to a brand new platform that you've never done before, it's like, all right, well, let, let's test the waters. Let's make yeah. a couple of thousands. And, um, but they came out, like, when the Livewire came out, each dealer got like six or seven of them. Most of them still have six of them or so, five of so them. Exactly. So exactly. That, so that, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. So they, they, they don't want to have these bikes sitting on the floor for a year or two to get sold, yeah, being like, brand new. So exactly. supply and demand, man. I mean, I think what's going to happen right away, which a lot of dealers might not even allow, is a lot of people are going to go to test drive. Everybody's going to want to test ride the bike. And the dealers can be like, oh, no, 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 we can't let you put miles on it or whatever. Some dealers might say they don't care. But hopefully Harley, like, Daytona's coming up would have been a great thing to have five or six of those on the butt on the on the truck for people to drive. Exactly. To ride. That's in a few weeks already. You know, and that's in a few weeks, but that's probably not gonna happen. But maybe some of these other rallies, like Indians already got the chief on the trucks being demoed. Harley's gotta get some of those bikes on. Like when when I the V-Rod first came out, I was around back when the V-Rod came out, I was riding, you were probably in high school or something. Or grammar <laughs> school. So in 2002, when they came out with the demo truck, they had all the Harleys and they always had two of each kind. When the V-Rod came out, they had a whole separate, like, 8, 10 of those bikes so everybody could ride that bike. They did it with the Livewire this year, remember? They, they had a separate truck just for the Livewire. We went to, um... Yeah, but there were, oh yeah, there were six six or seven Livewires. So yeah, yeah, that's what you gotta do. They gotta have all Pan Americas. Like, it doesn't have to be all specials, but it should be like three of the regular and three of, at least six models for people to jump on and ride. And, and that's, that's where you're gonna build excitement and you're gonna get people out there to buy. I mean, I'm sure people are clumping money down now, but you know, who knows? You, people want to see the bike in person. Like I know my dealer, he said a lot of, he's got like five or six guys ready to give money, but they want to see the bike. Yeah. I want to see the bike too. I mean, if I want one, I'm sure I can make a phone call and I can get one. But I mean, I, I saw the the prototype back in the, 
the motorcycle show yeah. uh, last year. They came. It looks a lot different than one that's out now. From the no, 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 no. It, it, no, it looks, it looks it, just like it. The prototype looked a little more plasticky. I mean, like it was like fake shit on there. It's a prototype. Like yeah. But it, it, it all seemed almost just alike. And, yeah. and I'm telling you, that thing in person, when I saw it, I'm like, whoa. I like, mean, to me, it looks huge on, on the, I don't know how big it is in it's person. A big, it's a big bike. Yeah. It's, it's a big bike. So it's bigger than... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a big bike. But it's only 550 pounds. They're saying the weight's like lowered or whatever, so hopefully. I mean, when the FTR came out, I was in love with the FTR when it first came out. I wanted one so bad. I went down to my, our, our local dealer down here and, and test drove one, and it got off, and I was like, no. Now they made some changes, you know, the handlebars, the seat height, a couple of little minor things. I'm going to ride it again because, again, I still love the, the FTR Carbon came out and I love it. Also want to ride a Chief in the Stealth Gray with the 19 inch wheel and maybe the, the Super Chief or whatever. But I also want to ride this bike. So there's a bunch, there's like four or five bikes. I'm also considering Triumph Scrambler. Well, I mean, Indians going around doing their whole little tour thing right now. So yeah. as soon as they come up to our area, then we're we'll gonna, be all over that. Yeah, we're gonna throw out some videos right now. Let you guys know what we think about them. Um, but going back to my question, do you think this is gonna help Harley, or you think the world's gonna what we're looking? I think in the short term, it might help them, depending on what the dealers price the bikes at, if they try to get greedy or not, availability, and if there's any issues. Remember, you know some of the bikes came out and they had issues, like the Livewire even had issues with the charging and they stopped selling them with the cable and stuff. You start having issues right off the bat with this bike. I mean, maybe that's why they're putting it out in May because they're going through the... I, I the think issues. they they took, they're taking extra precaution and taking extra time just to make sure that this thing... So there is no recall. It's the show floor and it's just gonna be perfect. I mean, nothing's ever perfect, but yeah. you know, there's gonna be nothing major going on. Um, yeah, and, and I think if they do all that, it could help, but... You know, Harley people are a little weird, but if you get new people in... Why, hold on, why are Harley people a little weird? Well, I mean, not a little weird. They're very set and like, that's not a Harley. That's not this. Like my V-Rod, hey, oh, that's not a Harley. That's not... For 15 years, they, they made it for 15 years and then they stopped making it. Now everybody's like, oh, that V-Rod's cool. That yeah, it's cool because they stopped making it. But when they were making it, nobody was buying it. A lot of Harley riders are very stubborn. Yes. And they don't like change. Yeah. And the minute you I love change. I want power. Like I'm happy that they finally made a bike. I don't have to do engine yeah, work. Yeah, but too. you're 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 also a very open minded person. Yeah, I love all I love, I love a lot also, of motorcycles. It, yeah. And, and you come from a world where you, you used to ride sport bikes and dirt yeah, bikes and I've everything. had so, Triumph, Ducati, Kawasaki, exactly. so I've had all you're, those you're a well rounded rider when it comes to that, when it comes to brands. But yes. a lot of people that are just let's say just hardy enthusiasts they hate other bikes and then they don't they hate to accept change yeah they, they don't like seeing new things yeah and i mean that that's what i think is like like come on like these new things need to happen in order for everything to even work even better and in order for the company just to well you know. i think a lot of harley guys are gonna buy would buy this bike because it's harley davidson where they wouldn't normally go out and buy a bmw adv or whatever so yeah. you might get more people into the adv sport because it's a harley davidson but it also it's gonna lead the way hopefully for different models like 1250 Custom, maybe like that Sportster one we showed with the dual shocks, maybe in a 975 platform, mm -hmm. and also possibly smaller ADV bikes. Now if they made a, a ADV bike like this size, with like a 900, pushing over 100 horsepower, that would be... Well, that, that, that's the thing, this is the first one they're gonna make, yeah, and after it's this, if one. it's successful, then they'll make the smaller Well, the live wire, they said the same thing, we came out at the top of the line and now, you know, it, it's 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 just like every like Tesla did it. It worked out for them. Um, well, Harley's coming out with this one. It's twenty something thousand. If they come out with one that's in the lower teens, it might work out really well the, for the, them. The thing is that all right. What you need to understand also is that the companies need to come out with the most expensive first vehicle first to get also that capital. So yeah. once you get that capital into the company and people like the technology and they like what what it's set, then to you be, can make cheaper. Then models. you can make cheaper models and, and people will grow into it. So Tesla did it, very successful. Lucid mm. is also doing the same thing. You familiar with Lucid, uh, the car company? No. It's a brand new um, electric company. They're doing the same thing. Rivian also doing the same thing. Um, it, it, it's just the way it is. It's just you need to make the big one to get that capital in the building. And after you have that capital, you can start building and exploring new options. When, and, yeah, but you the live wire fell options. flat on its face. Hold, I don't think the Pan America is going to fall flat on its face. I think the Pan America will sell very I, well. I, th I think it'll sell well, too. It's just a matter, like I said, of getting them out there. I mean, hopefully they can increase production if it does start selling right away instead of just pumping out a couple. 
But as far as design, what do you think about it? Well, when, when you compare it to the competition? The only one, I mean, I'm not a big, you rode the Tenere, I'm not like a Tenere person or whatever. I'm not, I like Ducati, but I don't really like the ADV bike that much. I like the Triumph Scrambler, but that's not really the competition because that's a lower, uh, uh, smaller bike. But up against the BMW, I like the BMW, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, but BMW looks, it's nice. uh, the BMW is probably the nicest one on, on the market until now. Until now, yeah. I think, like I said before, and I'm not saying it because I'm a, I'm a Harley enthusiast and I love Harley, but. Well, some people don't like the front end on that thing. I that's like my it. favorite part. I that like head lip is so sick, yeah. man. It's so dope. To me, it's like a it. lost in space kind of thing. Like, you can it's, see that thing come out of the chair. It's futuristic. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. It's just cool. It just screams out. Listen, I'm here to take on the road, and I don't care who's here, I'm taking over. This is my I just now. like the power, I like the suspend, the adaptive suspension. I mean, I, hopefully a lot of this stuff, the, the, the TFT display, the rider mode, rider modes, <laughs> rider modes, how long have we been saying yeah, rider modes? That's a sport mode on it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, rain mode, and, and the, rain mode. Rain, rider modes. Hopefully a lot of that stuff will trickle down to the dressers yeah. without going up to $40,000 for the yeah, dressers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, just that, just the big thing that they put RDRS in as standard. That's a big thing as well, yeah. A lot of standard stuff on that thing. You know, it just annoyed me that they kind of snuck in without telling it's a thousand bucks for the height adjustment thing. I don't really know if I need the height adjustment thing because I'm a big guy. You're, you're but good. it's not only height adjustment, it's also load leveling. Yeah. So now if my wife gets on, it's going to adjust for the load instead of me sitting there cranking the shock. And yeah, everything. yeah. And then also if I put bags and other stuff on it, it's going to adjust for the load. Like for for us shorter riders, that that thing is pretty. Yeah, cool. that you're gonna need. Um, it. but come on, who hasn't been on a tall bike before? You just get on that thing, that tippy toe it, <laughs> tippy toe, so, get out of there. Well, uh, a lot of people try to flat foot both feet, but in reality, what you should do is just tip to one side. Yeah. It would be a lot easier. It's, it's like some dirt bikes. Most dirt bikes, they're really yeah. tall. And what do you do? You you tip to one side. One side you don't try side. to flat foot it. Nah, man, that's it. I I think it could help, but I don't know if if they go beyond it, I think it, it could save the company or whatever as far as getting new riders in and everything. But it's going to rely on the pricing, it's going to rely on the marketing, it's going to it's gonna rely on the dealers. Now it's in the dealer's hand. The company gave you a bike that's awesome. Gave you power, gave you uh, the pricing, gave you everything. Don't mess it up at the dealer level. You have the tools. Yeah, you have the Not tools. The Don't mess it up at the dealer level and get greedy and try to make a couple grand on it and scare people away and say, well, screw Harley, they want $3,000 over this price. It happens a lot, man. It does happen a lot. And that's, a lot. that's when those dealers deserve to go out of business. They really Unfortunately. do. Unfortunately. They really do. I, I would never, ever, ever pay over list price for anything. Yeah, me neither. I don't care how much money you had. Even if I had a few money, I'd be like, no, I'll go somewhere that's else. That's just the principle. I was like, yeah. why? It's why? Yeah. Why? So you could put an extra three grand in your pocket? It's like when I used to go look at the SRTs and stuff and they wanted you know, a dealer want ten thousand dollars off. What are you out of your mind? Like drive off the lot. It's worth five thousand dollars less, and you want me to pay you ten more? <laughs> exactly. You know? Um, I'm I'm really excited about the Revolution Max engine. So am I. It's. Uh, I want to see that go on a bunch of different platforms. I mean, they're gonna keep the twin cams. Yeah, they're, 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 they're not the twin, twin cams. Cam. The, the Milwaukee make, eights, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're gonna keep it for a while. But that that revolution, like it, it's it's gonna open up so many doors. Just a liquid cool engine that's mm -hmm. gonna allow you to just play around and create off that you one platform a revolution like a like a 1500 or 1800 in a torn pl platform like 180 horsepower or some sh crazy shit like that and like a street glide or a road glide that'd be dope that would be cool with single side with the uh, mono shock suspension uh, dope. a lot of people are asking harley davidson just they, their their biggest thing is like oh well hey, come on it's like you sh you guys should all be making liquid cooled engines already blah blah on the third but it's like mm -hmm. They've been making it. They had liquid cool engine they for had. 15 years, 20, yeah. 2002 to 2017. Yeah. It's not that long ago they didn't have a liquid cooled engine. And they had the, um, the streets. <laughs> oh, what? The streets with Harley. the revolution motor. No, we're talking about Harleys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, I'm gonna be posting up another video tomorrow because I'm thinking about getting a bagger, so I'm gonna have to get rid of one of my bikes. <laughs> so tune in for that video, uh, that discussion. I'm gonna catch you on the next one. This is the coolest white guy I know, Jerry. And like always, let the force be with you. Ride safe and enjoy the ride, baby. Peace. <laughs>